This is the Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter. Very top heavy. This Multi Plus 2 is top heavy. All of the weight is up in this top third, right? Or top two fifths. The bottom's very light. Anyway, they want you to mount this thing on the wall, vertically, just like this. It's one of the first things they tell you in the manual. You know how many of these I see mounted, laying on their back? They're not gonna ventilate that way, okay? And then you're gonna shorten the life, you're gonna overheat, you could have a problem. They've gotta be mounted vertical, okay? And the way it works is there's this, this keyed flange with little slots in it. It has a corresponding plate with the key teeth, male teeth, that this goes up and clicks into. It's a French cleat. This is basically a French cleat. So rather than just putting up a big piece of three quarter inch plywood and then screw this to it, which I don't like to do. What are you gonna wood screw it? No, not in a van. You either have to through bolt it with washers and nylock nuts, or you can use T nuts and um, not uh, Loctite. Uh, what I do, is I make my frames out of 8020. This is gonna give me 100% ventilation and my inverter is going to stay as cool as it possibly could stay because the entire back is open. And this is gutsy. You see what we got going on here? I've got two inch by one inch. This is 10 series, okay? And I'm gonna be mounting it to 15 series. So we're gonna have two big batteries on this tray wired in parallel. So we'll have uh, 1260 amp hours at 12 volts. But look at the space between that thin 10 series and the 15 series rack. That is a beautiful space for the inverter. The Victron Multi Plus 2 has to hang vertically. It's the first thing they tell you in the installation manual. So that's where we're gonna hang it. And I've built a nice 80-20 support rack to hang it right in there. The battery bridges are 15, this is 10. So you have to get a special T-nut for the 15 series that takes a quarter 20 bolt. Um, yeah, look at the way the back of this is constructed. This is all the vertical support. Remember I said all the weights at the top. So I've got four points of contact on each side. And here's your keyed plate. See, this is the plate they give you with the, with the male flanges on top, and it just fits in like that. Then there's two mounting points down here to keep it from doing this. So the other thing I wanted to mention is you can see that I put my mounting plate inboard of my vertical supports, not outboard. So if this was against my battery box, and I mounted outboard, I've taken my center of gravity further away from its mounting point, and it's gonna to wanna to do that. It's not gonna do that, but the, the indication would be to do that. So what I'm doing is recessing the mount. Now I'm basically centered on my down pressure. So this thing is almost balanced on its own, not with the inverter in place. But you get the idea, that's what we're going for. We wanna make it as straight down to the floor as possible without any kind of a weight tip, one way or other. Have I made my point? When I assemble this thing, I am using my squares in the corners. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests. People wanna know what's up. And uh, we finally got the final design. Here they are right here. Final design, a bigger one and a smaller one. And you do need both, depending on the area you're working within. Sometimes you have to use the smaller one because it's a smaller box opening. But one of the uh, improvements we made to it is we ramped this so you can get into the corner and tighten your T-nut. And we tapered it. So you have this option as well. So these are ready to print, okay? Again, I'm not selling these so I can retire down to Boca Raton. I'm selling these because I wanna donate all of the money to pediatric cancer research. 
okay? We're gonna pay for the material. Ron's donating his time to run the CNC machine. We're all gonna do our part to get these shipped out. Just buy a few of these, will you? You're giving money to pediatric cancer research. Any of you who have family members or friends with children that have got cancer, you know what I'm talking about. We gotta stop this nonsense. I have cancer, I have prostate cancer. I'm on my way to a good cure. And uh, once I get off the hormone medicine, then I'm gonna really get back in shape. I look awful now, I've lost weight, I'm weak. I've gotta go till March and then I'm off the meds. I can start working out again, build up muscle. I have zero testosterone. That's, that's what the medicine does, it takes away all my testosterone. So, you know, I'm watching romantic comedies. Uh, I'm going to craft shows. Of course, I had to say that joke, right? Like you haven't heard that before. Seriously, even if you never use them, even if you're not building anything, buy a set and know that you're contributing to uh, finding a cure for pediatric cancer. I'll give you more information on that down the road. We're gonna print a few of these out, a few hundred of these out. Uh, they're very helpful if you're working with 8020. Believe me, I do everything with those clamps, those squares. So let me take you in the van and show you where this is going. So this is a pantry right here. It goes floor to ceiling. And down here, I guess I'll show you that first. Down here, from this point down, we've got this false dresser. This is gonna look like three drawers, right? But what this actually is, is the step deployment for nighttime to get into the bed. So that's what this entire panel is. But look at all that glorious space behind it. So that is ready-made for our inverter. So this is the plate that I built. Let's put it in the right way, George. So what we're gonna do is I've got my little elbows and T-nuts. We'll go on either side, right? We fasten it to the 15 series battery bridge. There's a battery right there. This couldn't be any better because down the bottom of my inverter, my big four rots are coming out and they're going right to the bus bar that's gonna be going to the battery. So that's a good thing to fuses, of course. So this is where that inverter is gonna sit. It's perfect. It's a perfect spot for it. It's fully ventilated that way and up in this way. Now, if I ever have to replace it or service it, this whole step panel is hinged out anyway to be used as a step. So I just take that hinge pin off each side, whole panel comes out, brings me to this, and we can service that inverter. We can service these batteries from in here as well. I can slide them out and remove them. That's not so easy because they're 165 pounds a piece. Next project. Look at this beast. This is the wire rack that John made for us. This is one inch square tubular steel. He welded it all together and uh, put it on a rolling cart. It's heavy. It is so heavy. It's amazing how much wire weighs. I just can't get over it. Um, you know what's crazy about this? This amount of wire, as you see it here, double-sided, this is three vans worth of wire. I just made this bulk purchase, divided across the three vans. Can you imagine this much wire in three vans? So this is 500 feet of eight wire. It's amazing. And what I do is I make sure my runs are sized according to the voltage used, the amperage run, the whole bit. A lot of people just grab 12 wire and run the whole van with 12. In most cases, you're not gonna get hurt by doing that or, or running six or eight, whatever the case may be. But that's excessive weight and it's excessive cost. You don't need that. My lighting, for instance, all my lighting, is running 18. So I have a separate rack for 18 wire. This is a thousand feet of 18 wire. Just to run all the lighting in the van, the switch legs and all that is 18. So I'm pretty excited to get this rack over to the, the van, put it at the tail of the van and just pull my harnesses through. Um, on this rack now, we got a little efficient. I've got my fish sticks 
on one side mounted, I can connect these together and fish through a, a full length and connect my wire. On this side, yeah, it's heavy. On this side, I've got my fish tapes. These fish tapes are a godsend. They're flexible. I can run these things through the van. I can go over the river and through the woods, connect my wire and run it, pull it back through. I don't know what I'd do without this. I use this all the time. So wiring's all set. That's what I'm gonna be doing this week is pulling my wire through these four vans. When we sent Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter off into the wild, we didn't give them any way to get up into their bed. And if you remember, they had that articulating bed that they pulled down at the same time they reclined it. It was a big futon in the back and then covered the dinette. Well, we gave them no way to get in the bed. No fancy pull out steps, nothing to fold it out. There was nothing we could do. He's back for his tighten up. We made a few modifications in his van. One of them being, we got to address these steps. So we looked and we looked and we, we put the think tank together and we were button heads. There's nowhere in that van that we can build in any kind of a step, stair, nothing. Can't do it. So then we started looking for ladders and step stools that were out in the field. And we found one that was a decent basis for what we wanted to do. We needed to make this a one of a kind. We needed to make it special for Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter. And I think that we did. Let me show you what we did to this. This is a beauty. We took this thing apart, took it all apart. The treads weren't wide enough. So we made wider treads, okay? And we made our own treads out of cherry. How beautiful this looks. Oh, it's so nice. So he's got cherry treads, little rubber on the edge. And of course, it folds up and he can put it right behind his driver's seat. And when he needs it, he brings it out, opens it up, and it's almost like they're gliding down the stairs because they're a lot deeper than they were. So we're pretty happy with the way this turned out. Uh, it's a fully custom job. For the most part, you know, we left a mechanism in, but now that we have this ladder and we were able to study it, we can make our own. We got this all dialed in. We can make our own next time.